Inferno Climber is a 3D action RPG developed by Arc System Works. In terms of gameplay, it feels like a blend of Souls and Zelda, with the graphical style of the early PlayStation 2 era. It rewards positioning, environmental awareness, and knowledge more than mechanical skill. The combat is simple and slow-paced. In most cases, you will take out enemies with a couple of light attacks. Despite this, your arsenal is somewhat fleshed out. With melee weapons, you have access to a light attack and heavy attack. While jumping, you can toss out light and heavy attacks as well. As you progress through the game, you'll find skill books that add a bit more to your repertoire. This includes a parry, charge attack, and a tackle. There are a few more nuances to the combat, like counterattacks and backstabs. Bows are available for ranged attacks, and similar to the Soul series, aren't meant to be used as a primary mode of attack. Various spells can be found, ranging from offensive fireballs to healing spells. When starting in the game, you will choose from one of eight classes. Each comes equipped with their own starting stats and a minor perk. The Young Warrior, for example, fully restores his health and mana every time that he levels, while the Forest Hunter will periodically heal when poisoned. Their class choice, however, is not permanent. When your character dies, you will then choose another instead of immediately reviving. With your newly selected class, you must return to the place of death with a death contract to bring them back to life. Death contracts are available for purchase from the main hub for a measly sum. To prevent the player from feeling boned when they die, experience between all eight classes is partially shared, meaning they will be of relatively equal character level. On top of this, there's a storage box in the hub area which lets you share inventory among all of your classes. Each level grants a skill point, which needs to be spent in the hub. Akin to other RPGs of this ilk, you have a variety of different stats to choose from to augment your health, strength, magic power, and so on. A key component to Inferno Climber is exploration. Each stage feels very open, many times with branching paths. You'll come across a variety of different puzzles, most of which felt creative, especially some of the optional ones. The majority of puzzles are akin to Zelda style, revolving around hitting switches, moving blocks, and occasionally utilizing your abilities. It often felt very rewarding to finally discover how to get to a sneaky chest. The game features a hunger system, which I hated at first. Initially, it felt redundant because there was food lying around everywhere in the first stage, so it was just an annoyance to have to eat every now and again. A bit later, however, I started to appreciate it more as a proper gameplay mechanic, when food was more scarce. Cooking allows you to create foods from base ingredients to produce food that was difficult to rot, filled you more, and had slight boons. Inferno Climber utilizes the hunger system into the level design similar to Dark Souls with the Estus Flask. The amount you bring determines how long you can go before you need to try to forage for more food or go back. The desert level was designed especially well in this regard. Food here rotted faster than normally, and you became hungry at a more brisk pace. To counteract this, cacti can be destroyed for their water, which would satisfy your stomach. However, there's only so many cacti that are lying around. Weapons, which are dropped from monsters and found throughout levels, have slight randomization in their stats. The actual values are slight variations, around 5%. The key component are the slots, which can be socketed for bonuses. The gems are typically found throughout the world in chests, as well as from enemy drops. Each set of stages ends with a boss fight. These bosses typically carry over some mechanic from the preceding levels, and all felt like a unique addition to the experience. From start to finish, Infernal Climber took me around 40 hours to finish. I'm currently getting some more time out of it while trying to 100% it. It's honestly a tragedy just how underrated this game is. Inferno Climber's worst crimes involve some iffy grammar and the occasional rough edge. If you can look beyond its dated graphics, then you'll find a brilliant experience with a large amount of meaningful content behind it.